Next up, we're going to have Tom Busby speaking to us. And Tom's trading career be dates back to the late 1970s. Quoted and published in Futures Magazine, Futures Magazine and Active Trader Magazine. He actively trades and invests in futures, stocks, options, and currencies. Guest appearances include CNN, First Business News, MoneyShow.com, Steve Crowley's American Scene Radio, recognized as one of the first educators to trade live in front of an audience. Tom authored Winning the Day Trading Game, The Markets Never S Sleep, and trades to win. Tom founded DTI in 1996, and with his more than 30 years of trading experience, he has helped thousands of students become better traders. So I'm going to bring Tom up, and Tom, give us a uh, quick sound check, and I will pass over the screen while you do so. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Can you hear me? I can indeed, and Tom, I just sent you over the screen. All right, folks, we'll get started. Uh, I'm Tom Busby, and uh, Saturday afternoon here in Mobile, Alabama. And what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about some market insights. And it's a lot easier, I think, at the end of the day to show you in a live market as opposed to the market that's closed and all the markets are closed right now. So uh, first of all, welcome, and let's, uh, let's get started. All right, you hear about risk all the time in trading, and, and um, I think that uh, it's very important to establish what your risk tolerances are before you actually enter into a live trade or investment. And I know that uh, I know there's a lot of different theories out there. What I'm going to give you today, I think, is something that's simple, it's practical, and it will work like a charm if you'll just follow it. So. Um, Basically, here's what I do. Um, I use a $300 risk per 100 shares of stock, $300 risk per a futures trade, or $300 risk per an option trade. Here's how it works. If you buy 100 shares of stock at 50, quite simply, where would your stock be at 50? Okay, if you buy, if you buy a e mini or e mini um, futures contract, how many points equal three hundred bucks? Right. So if I bought the e mini at eighteen seventy five, simply I wouldn't want my stop to be lower than what number? Right, I'm still on that page. I'm still on the risk disclaimer page. I'm just going through these real quick. So what would the price of the stop be on the evening that was bought at 1875? With a six-point stop. 1869, right? All right, let's go to options. Let's go to options. If I bought a $5 option, a $5 option, where would I place my stop? Exactly. And that's very simple, but it works like a charm because you can take the number of contracts up depending on, depending on how much risk you want to take. Okay, and that's your initial starting point. Now let me give you some targets for those. Those we call it level one, level two, and level three targets. If you go for a level one target, then you would you would try to make at least six points. A level two target would make twelve, and a level three would make eighteen. And so you can set your trades up and plan your trades without ever getting into a real market if you use that setup. And that's the simplicity of what I've learned out 
a, a lot of years of doing this because I know how difficult it is sometimes in the heat of the battle to come up with these numbers. Okay. A little bit about my background. I graduated from the University of Georgia. I went to Oklahoma City Law School. I was an officer in the United States Air Force, um, and I served as a vice president when I got my start uh, in the brokerage industry. Uh, I'm currently a member of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Uh, that's the largest exchange in the world. I'm a member. And I was selected years ago to be one of 50 people uh, that was allowed to get the early edition of what we're doing now as electronic traders. And that was the Globex Terminal. I had one here in Mobile, Alabama, which I thought was remarkable to convince them to give it to me. Uh, here's the three books he referred to, Winning the Day Trading Game, The Markets Never Sleep, and Trade to Win. The first book sort of takes you from when I got started, some of the things that happened to me, and then how I overcame those, and then, of course, um, the second book is about the 24-hour market, which I believe in. That comes from my Globex days. And then Trade to Win is putting it all together and having a strategy that works. Who is DTI? We've been in business for a long time, 1996, recognized by the Better Business Bureau as an A-plus company, and we really try to say what we're going to do and then do what we're going to say. There's our headquarters in Mobile. We have an actual bricks and mortar place to come train. I built this back in the uh, year 2000. We moved in in 2001, 10,000 square feet dedicated to people that want to learn to trade here in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, here's something new this year, the DTI's mobile app. You can go to www.dtitrader.com slash app, and you can download it on your iPhone or your Android. And the neat thing about this app, you get our real-time roadmap free of charge, what it's telling you, and then also, this is, this is also something that helps you, we put out market insights all, every day about each trading day. And it's sort of like your thoughts of the day. These are insights about the market each day that go out through this app. Okay, our, our presentation today, I'm going to talk about some more trading insights. We're going to talk about fear in trading. We're going to talk about how I handle losses. You're going to have them. I'm going to talk about how I do it emotionally, okay? And then, of course, my approach to trade. Part one, trading insights. All right. In T-Buzz, this is a service that I offer, we, we, risk, we risk $300 per contract on 100 shares of stock. We risk six points on an E-mini, and we risk $3 on a stock option. Simple, straightforward. Markets open 24 hours a day. There's an Asian market, there's a European market, there's an early U.S. market, and there's a late U.S. market. All these markets can be taken advantage of if you have the knowledge. All right, this is an insight I tell everybody, and I like to start out with this one. Record prices on the first day of the year. This helps you trade the winners. Now, I know this is uh, about mid-May right now, and so what we did, we made a copy of what I recorded on the first day of the year, and you could send Adam at DTI Trader an email, and he will send you a copy of my printed sheet of the first days of the year. It's very insightful because you start seeing the trends of the year, and it becomes even more important when you get into October, November, December. So anyway, Adam will get that to you if you just send him a request. Okay. Now, when a stock crosses 100, it will typically go to 110. Can you think of any personal examples where you've seen this? I look at uh, Wynn Casino. I remember the first time it crossed 100. We bought it at 100, and it went to 110. I look at it today, it's at 200. That's an example. I can think of Federal, Federal Express. Current examples are Hershey going to uh, right at 110, and one stock I really like to trade is... ERX. I don't know if you traded this one or not, but this is a this is a perfect example of a stock that crossed 100 and then went to 110. So you look for these things. 
usually notice them about 98, and once they get over that 98 and a half area, uh, then they become on your watch list. But I keep a list of stocks approaching that 100 all the time. Okay, every Wednesday a crude oil report is released. This is timely news. There's pre-market trading opportunities in the crude sector on that day. What you got to look for? How do you got to look? I think we've got a video on that. You can ask Adam. I'm not sure. If not, we'll, um, we, we do this trade quite a bit. But if you trade crude oil, it's an interesting approach to get in before the news announcement at 930. Economic data. Okay, I want, you to, I want you to write this down. If you get all economic data that's going to come out in the year, you need to know two major reports. The first one, there's eight Fed meetings throughout the year. Eight Fed meetings. These Fed days are very important to the general trend of the market. You go mapping out from Fed to Fed. We spend a lot of time at DTI talking about this, but eight Fed meetings. There's another monthly report that comes out. It's called the unemployment report. Typically, it's the first Friday of each month. You'll notice, regardless of what the trend is, sometimes that trend really gets accelerated or reversed on the unemployment report. There's 12 of those, one each month. Those are the two main ones that you got to know about. And it's simple to remember and if you do it the way I did. Eight Fed reports, 12 unemployment reports. All right, news. Now, if you trade stocks, news becomes very important, but the key news for each stock is their quarterly earnings. And so a good website to go to there, I believe, is earningswhispers.com. Earningswhispers.com. That's a good website to go to. In general, here's how you tell if you got a battle. In general, if you've got a portfolio of stocks, and the market's moving up, especially if it goes up 2% and your stock has not moved, you've got an early warning sign, an early warning sign, you might want to leave that stock out of your portfolio. This is a good tester. It worked for years for me, but you ought to check it out and just mark, mark the stock. If the general market goes up 2% and your dog doesn't, get rid of your dog. When in a position, always know where the exit resides. Notice I gave you risk parameters tied in with targets. I know where I'm wrong. I know where I'm really right. Never risk too much on any trade. If you cannot afford $300 per 100 shares, if you can't afford 6 points per e-minute, if you can't afford $3 per option, then I don't think you should be trading. You got to ask yourself, can you afford that? The three hundred dollars to me is something uh, sort of you've got to cross that line if you're going to be a trader. Part two, okay, that was insights. I got, I probably got 150 of those, but I picked out a couple for the day's presentation. Part number two, overcoming fear and trade. We all have fear and trade. Can you imagine what it was like to be in a crowd of about? 1,500 people the first time I ever traded publicly live, what it was like. Oh, I was scared. I was scared. But then I had one thought, one thought. Hey, this is only one trade of my next 10,000. I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to move on. And so fear, everybody has fear when it comes to trading. Fear, there's type. Fear of loss. I believe if you'll take the following mental attitude, I'm risking $300, and accept that before you enter the trade, your fear will go away. I saw this work with our students that we work with, and it's exceptional how they do because they buy into the fact they accept the loss on the front end, not on the back end. Fear of loss. Lack of knowledge. Of course you need knowledge in the market. I can show you, and if you, if you end up joining us, you will actually see where I took, took the theory of knowledge and translated it into dollars. And, and I did it in, in a short period of time showing what people could do with knowledge. It's not money. It's knowledge that's the key to trade. Knowledge. Seek it. 
Learn everything you possibly can because you don't know when you're going to need it, and it will help you in those times. Outside influences. How many people ever heard something and they, you thought it was a good idea? Hey, I thought that was a good idea what I heard. Or, for example, you know what I gave you today about the $300 loss, and say maybe you're talking to another trader, and he said, oh, he just poo-poos that. That won't work or whatever. Well, let me tell you, you've got to be free of outside influences to be a trader. You do a lot of walking alone as a trader, and you've got to be able to be decisive enough to know this is what you're going to do. Trust in technology. Now, everybody here probably is using some kind of form of electronic trading. Everybody here is trying to do it. Have you thought about what happens if the following things occur? The Internet goes down. What are you going to do? Do you have a number to call? Or maybe the system uh, malfunctions? Do you have a backup account to put trades in? Uh, I would tell you to get a live person that you can call on any product or anything that you do in the market because nothing is old-fashioned as get somebody on the phone will save you. I also tell you, have all these numbers pre-programmed in your cell phone where you, you can just go tabbing if you need to get there. The worst thing to do is have things go crazy on you and you're looking for a phone number. You'd be surprised how it hides like a needle in a haystack when you need it. All right, solutions to fear. Fear of loss. Risk the amount that you're comfortable with. If you started today with my philosophy of $300 per trade, you would start seeing that the fear of loss would be minimized and you would accept it and then you would do a lot better with your analysis because now you've got that one simple thing out of the way which is the emotional side of trading. I tell my subscribers to risk a maximum $300. Now we don't always risk that much because of knowledge, but the maximum trade of any trade I've done is about $300 per risk. Now here's some favorite educational websites, the cmegroup.com, barrens.com, that's where I get my news calendar from. Now if you don't know much about options, this is a great um, free place you can go, optionsplaybook.com. dtitrader.com is our, our home website, and TradingPub is an affiliate company, tradingpub.com. More sources of education. Learn to use the technology. Let's talk about that. If you get a platform, most platforms will offer a simulated uh, trial or a simulated way to get used to it. And I would think, okay, I would think that you should practice before you actually put real money on there. You've got to know how to put orders in. You've got to know how to cancel orders. You've got to know how to check on your order status. You've got to know where to enter, stop orders, different type orders, what kind of orders your platform takes before you put real money online. Spend some time taking it for a test drive through that simulated account. Now, you will never be a trader trading a simulated account. There's going to come a day that you're going to have to put real money on the line. But at least learn how to use the platform. I see so many people lose money because they don't know how to place stops. They don't know where to place stops. They don't know where to place exits. They don't know how to close out an account. And so spend a little time in the beginning learning how to do those things. Here's the tools that I use to overcome fear. I have our own software. It's proprietary. I think it's the best analytical software I've ever seen. I'm biased. We've been modifying it for all these years, but it works. It helps me decide simply whether it be long a market, short a market, or out of a market. And that's what I have is a consistent application. And that's, I guess, you could say a secret. It's not a secret. I tell everybody this. A simple application to get the correct answer. Now that's a picture of it. And you can see there at the very top we have uh, the ETR line that tracks the market where, because I, I don't like sitting in front of a computer. As much as I've sat in a computer in my lifetime of trading, I've said enough. And so I like to be able to glance at it and see it. 
By the way, if you download the app, you'll have a copy of this on your phone. We have compasses. The compasses tell us where the buy zones are, the sell zones are on any contract we're looking at. And then we have our, our custom page set up with the open opening in the first column. You will find that the opening is the key price out of the four. You got four high, lows, current, but the opening price sets the tone, and that's the value of that first day where we open the year, the value of that sheet, if you ask Adam to send it to you, would be. Here's some key features. The custom page, you organize it any way you want to. Notice we got net openings there. You see Netflix was very strong on this day. You see Google was weak. ETR page, again, you can plug any symbol in there you want to plug in there. In this case, this is when we, we were long crude from about 98, and crude was going up, and it let us follow it very closely without having to watch it so closely. The compass. Our charts are unique. Our charts lay out a lot of key information. They lay out where, in this case, the mini open a month app. They lay out where the targets are for the upper move. They, they lay out where the, buy, the enter it is. And then, of course, you have a visual presentation as it fulfills those numbers to the left. And it does it both short term, swing, and long term. Now, the horse race. This, this is one we have a special strategy we teach here. It's in our old school class. But we lay out stocks in the first hour of trading. And basically what I did is I measured the momentum of those stocks and I, and I showed they could be very reliable trades in the first hour. And so we go with five stocks that we look at, we watch them, and every Tuesday, every Tuesday, you get to watch me trade it live. So if you want to register for that, uh, we don't have a registration link, just send Adam a note and we'll send you an invitation. But the horse race, you'll see it in live action every Tuesday at DPI. The railroad tracks. Now, everybody's heard, hey, how does Google relate to the E-mini? Or how does Apple relate to the E-mini or the NASDAQ? We developed the railroad tracks inside our roadmap to know that if Google's at 550, the NASDAQ should be at 3561. Or if Google's at 550 or 1147, the NASDAQ should be at 35.93. We have a whole training class in teaching you how to use this stuff, but it's very simple in that it tells you at a glance where everything should be, what is outperforming, what is underperforming, and helps you identify future lots in the market. All right, let's talk about the graveyard. The graveyard is an emotional concept that I know some of you got losses in your portfolio, and they affect how you think about what's going to happen tomorrow. I got that loss in there. I, I hear, hear this from students all the time. I have a place that I put those type trades. They're called the graveyard, and I'll refer to it. That's in the graveyard, meaning I don't expect any recovery. I expect I had my maximum loss there and it's gone. That is the philosophy of the graveyard. You basically take those stocks or take those options or take those futures and say, hey, I bought in it up front. I was going to risk 300 bucks. I've lost 300 dollars. It's in the graveyard. And that's how you deal with this because I know everybody has this happen to them and it's a way to overcome bad trades emotionally if you think of it this way. It's a great concept to deal with your losses this way. Risk in trading is all about the, about the odds. If you know that you're 80% accurate, that means you're going to lose 20% of the time. If you accept right up front on every trade 100% that you're going to take the $300 loss, then you're going to be happy if you come in with eight winners out of 10. It's a whole way of playing the emotional game in trade. It works. It took me a lot of years to figure that out. That's what I would do if somebody was instructing me on trade. I control risk 
at $300 a trade. My actual loss rate, this is, I've got a service that I offer called PBUD, but my actual loss rate runs about 80 bucks, which means knowledge saves me $215 from my interest, if you think about that. In fact, it takes three loss for one anticipated plan loss. That's probably why people say, hey, Tom, you're always optimistic when it comes to trade. Because I got it emotionally in the right story. And you need to get that too. A lot of happier days are ahead for you if you do. It's an emotional way to manage your losses. 80% is perfect in trade. Somebody said 80%, that's perfect. Now, if you're a doctor, 80% wouldn't be good. But and trading is perfect. If you're hitting 80%, you're at a right balance for you to succeed. Now, a lot of people do not understand in trading, 1 plus 1 does not equal 2. The art is involved. The art of trading is involved. That's, that, that space between 1 and 1 is the art that you got to learn. Engineers have the toughest problem with this. If you're an engineer, you know, you were taught 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, and they have the toughest problem. Some doctors have, 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 a, have a problem with that. The scientific background, mental, mental mind has a problem with 1 plus 1 does equal 2. There's no absolute there. There's that, there's that space in there that makes the difference between winning and losing. How about my approach? I know the seasonal markets to trade. I will tell you right now, I'll give you right now something you could pay a lot of money for, but this is what you can expect over the next year and a half. I'll give you a second, I'll take a drink of water, and I'll be right back. Okay. The market from May to October in this year will create a historic buying opportunity. That means that means from May to October, it's going to be a trader's market. It means it's able, if you look at look over some of the down days that we'll have, if you look over that and look into 2015, you're going to find out that you're going to have some stock go on wholesale. And it's going to be a good time to build a great portfolio for 2000. In fact, 2015 is going to be a game buster year. So if you've been around uh, long enough to remember the, the late 90s, that's what you're going to see in 2015 in the market. If you, if you say, well, where do you get all this stuff? Well, it's cycles. It's seasonal. It's a lot. Of, you know, if you go back 100 years, you will find that 2015 is set up to be a great year. Other factors. Look at your 10 most prevalent fundamental economic indicators tracking the economy around the globe. Every one of those has bottomed. Every one of those is starting to rise. And you will see an acceleration of the lows of their highs over that 2015. So folks, write down. And let's make some money together. All right, we we'll break it down from the big picture from May to October to 2015 to one week time. You look at the news next week. You look at seasonal patterns. And then, of course, your own schedule. If you work 24 hours a day, uh, or 24, if you work, then you've got other opportunities in the market because it's open 24 hours a day. So you look for news and seasonal patterns to help you. Every Sunday night, Every Sunday night at 8 o'clock, I have a subscriber base that I talk to about next week. In that, I will identify the projection for the indexes. I will identify where the opportunities are in the market next week. And I will also identify three great trades that I'll be trading going into next week. I do it every Sunday night at 8. This is what it looks like setting up. This is the raw data. I will, I will use a blended approach. But if you look at Monday, okay, Monday looks like a very strong day if you look at the last 21 years. So you've got to keep that in your mind when you're planning your week. 
you came off a late rally. On, people knew this, by the way. I was, I don't know if you were. I knew money was going to be strong. When we were down on Friday, I got long. Market closed near its highs. I'm already taking advantage of these stats because I knew all the stuff that was going to happen, and this will accelerate in the money. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are not so strong. Keep that in mind. All right, let's look at news. Next week is May 19th. Okay, not much news on money, so the market will have a free reign to run. On Tuesday, the Fed starts talking. On Wednesday and Thursday of next week, we have some news, and we have the release of the minutes. Everybody see that FOMC minutes there with that red star by it on Wednesday? Does everybody see that? That is a turning point. Anytime those minutes come out during the week, that's a turning point in the market. So you can circle that time. It tells you right there. That's what experience shows. Now, know when you're going to trade. Know when you're going to uh, be not trading to avoid sitting in front of a computer. I find a lot of people spend way too much time in front of a computer and they get lost in, in the forest. Pick out the tall trees and climb those. Have the correct tools to minimize the time spent analyzing the market. I believe in mobile trading. I believe in having all your accounts on your phone and be free to roam. All right. so. My offer today is a simple one. It's an easy one. But you fill out a roadmap profile. It's about a 10-question questionnaire that I get to know a little bit about yourself. And then I'm going to give you a book or, or give you an audio. Immediately I'm going to give this to you of Winning the Day Trading Game. It's an audio. And then we will send you an invitation for you doing these two things. We'll send you an invitation with an invite into the more in my paid subscription service. You'll get to see what the formula of success looks like. And you'll get to see the plan for next week. Now, simple, straightforward. If, you're, if you like what you heard and you want to hear more, this is a good way of doing it. All right. Is there any questions or anything that I need to answer before I go? Uh, I got one last request. One last request. If you don't take me up on getting the free book, getting an invitation tomorrow night, do me a favor. Send me an email at t.busby99 at gmail.com um, and tell me why you can't take me up on that. Because if, you, if you're here on Saturday, you're dead serious about trading, and I want to help you. So send me an email, and maybe it's something as simple as you need me to send you a recording of. I don't know, but send me an email. Anyway, I will be doing this tomorrow night at 8. I look forward to those that come and join me. I'll introduce you to some of our customers, and we will uh, we will have the layout of next week. I want to thank the, uh, the people from MTI for inviting me today, and thank you so much uh, for you know, having me here. I hope I didn't bore you. I hope I got you thinking about the market, and I hope I simplified for you what a real trader does in the market when it comes to risk and something that will help you emotionally handle the ups and downs of being a trader. Thank you so much. There's a link at the bottom, www, I guess, the dtitrader.com slash survey to get you started. Thank you.